All right, so this is the second day or continuing day two of section 2.3 for pre-calc. We are starting with example eight here. It says find all the real zeros. So at your tables, how many should there be? Talk about it. How many zeros should there be? How many could there be? If we count all imaginary everything, there's how many? There's four. How do we know that? The highest power. So this is a polynomial of degree four. So we know that there could be four zeros. Okay. We have a lot of decimals in this, so we're probably not going to try factoring it, right? So grab your calculators. Go ahead and enter this equation in your y equals. And we're going to start with just a normal negative 10 to 10 window. Okay. And then decide if that's good enough. All right, so we've graphed it on our calculator, yes? We started out with a negative 10 to 10 window in both directions for x and y, yes? <coughs> All right, we got some data in there. Let me turn my stat plot off here. Okay, so how many zeros does it look like? You can see four? Okay, can we see them clearly? No. So what could we do? We could zoom in, all right? We could change our window. We could do a zoom box. Um, the one on the left, we should be able to figure out, yes? But the ones on the right-hand side here are pretty close together. So I want you to change your window, either by zooming in, by doing a zoom box, and selecting the right-hand side of this, okay? But work at your tables. I want you to find all the zeros. So you can split them up, but you need to find all four. All right, so I did a Zoom box. It's helping me out a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording while you guys actually calculate those zeros. Okay, so we've used our calculator, right, to come up with our zeros. What are they? Negative 3.090. So pretty close to a negative 3, yes? Okay, what else? 0.5? Okay. 1.133 and... Okay, so these two are really close together, right? You almost can't tell. You really have to zoom in order to set your cursors in the right spot to get them. Yes? Okay. So if we graph these, we have one at negative 3. We have one at 0.5, my board's off a little here, 1.1 1 .1 and 1.3. And then did it start low and go high? What happened? What was the function? Do you remember? Started high and ended high? Okay, so if we were sketching it, we know that we have to come down through here, right? Up through here. Do we cross at all of them? How do I know that I actually crossed through at all of them? We talked about that yesterday, right? How do I know that I cross and I don't just bounce there? There's a sign change. Okay. What else? What? Multiplicity. Yeah. All of these had a multiplicity of one, right? They were all unique zeros. Okay. So looking at the end behavior, limit of the function... As x goes to negative infinity, we said was positive infinity. And the limit of the function as x goes to negative infinity was still positive infinity, right? Both arrows are pointing up. So obviously, if we can find the zeros algebraically, 
through factoring, stuff like that, I'd want you to do that. These were all nice fun decimal zeros, right, that we couldn't find by factoring. Okay. All right, our last two examples, we're going to do the reverse. I'm going to give you the zeros, and I want you to tell me what the polynomial function is. Okay? So it says find a polynomial that has zeros at 2, negative 3, and negative 4. Now, it doesn't say anything about them being repeated zeros or having a multiplicity higher than 1, so we're going to assume they're all multiplicity 1. So the first thing you want to do is think about if I have a 0 at 2, what's the factor I would have seen that would have led me to say I have a 0 at 2? I would have seen an x minus 2, yes? And if I have a 0 at negative 3, the factor I would have seen would be x plus 3. And if I have one at negative 4, I would have seen x plus 4. So to come up with the polynomial, we don't want it in this factored form. We want the whole polynomial worked out. We have to multiply all these together. Okay? doesn't matter which two you start with. Foil two of them. And then once you get that simplified, multiply the third one in. Okay. I typically multiply the second two and leave the first one till later, but you can do it either way. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording. Go ahead and try this on your own. All right, working through this one, if we foiled the second two uh, binomials, we'd have x squared plus 7x plus 12. Okay. Distributing the x to everything gets me x cubed plus 7x squared plus 12x. And distributing a negative 2 to everything gets me negative 2x squared minus 14x minus 24. And then I want to combine like terms. So I end up with x cubed plus 5x squared minus 2x minus 24. Okay, now that's just an expression written the way I did it asked for a polynomial, so go ahead and give it a name. You can call it f of x, g of x, whatever you want, but name that polynomial. How could we check that we did the math right? What would be a fast way? Say this was a test question, a fast way to check it. Graph it. If you type this in your calculator, it should have zeros at, at positive 2, negative 3, and negative 4. If it doesn't, you know you did something wrong in your multiplication. Yes? Okay. How is the next one different? Our zeros aren't nice little integers anymore, are they? You don't like that? Oh, then we should just skip this one. No. I'm pretty sure there's one like this on the test, so we probably should go through it. There is actually a trick to doing these that makes it a little bit easier. So the first thing to notice is that if you have any either imaginary zeros or irrational ones, like we have here, 1 plus the square root of 3, that's irrational, they always occur in conjugate pairs. Now, I told you that 1 minus root 3 and 1 plus root 3 were both zeros. But I could have just given you one of those, and you have to know the other one is there too. Okay? So all of the ones that have the weird square roots, the irrational ones, and all the imaginary ones occur in pairs. So if I told you I had a 0 at 1 plus 2i, you would automatically know that there's also one at 1 minus 2i. Does that make sense? They're called implied zeros. Okay? All right, so let's go through the same process we did on the last one. We're going to start with our 0, and then we're going to work on what was the factor that we would have seen. So we have zeros at 2, 1 minus root 3, and 1 plus root 3. Okay, the first one, if my 0 is at 2, what would be the factor? x minus 2, okay? Now, be careful. It's always x minus whatever your 0 is, right? So if my 0 is negative 5, it's going to be x minus negative 5, or x plus 5. 
So when I look at this one, my 0 is 1 minus root 3. I'm going to have x minus the 0. Okay? Look how I wrote that. I said x minus the whole quantity that's the 0. My third 0 is 1 plus root 3, so my factor is going to be x minus the quantity 1 plus root 3. Okay? We're going to clean up the two on the right here. They look kind of messy, but we're going to do a little bit of rearranging to make this not so difficult. The first thing is I'm going to distribute this negative sign. Okay, so I'm going to have x minus 1 plus root 3. And if I do the same thing here, I'm going to have x minus 1 minus root 3. That allows me to get rid of those middle parentheses. Okay. Now, you have an option. You can think of this as if it were a trinomial times a trinomial, right? Three pieces times three pieces. You could multiply all those pieces together. You're going to get nine little pieces and then combine like terms. Okay? There's a shorter way, and that is to rethink of this as conjugates. If I think of this first as, as one whole chunk, the x minus 1 is one piece, plus root 3, and that same piece minus root 3. They're now conjugates. And what happens when you multiply conjugates together? The middle stuff cancels, right? So we just have to do first and last. So we're going to have still our x minus 2 in front here for now. When I FOIL this all out, I'm going to have this times itself, right? That would be my first. So what do we get if we take x minus 1 times x minus 1? x squared minus 2x plus 1, okay? Then we don't have to do insides and outsides because they're going to drop out. And then we have to do our last term. Well, what do we get if we take a positive times a negative? Negative. A root 3 times a root 3. So we get minus 3. Okay? And then we can clean this up a little bit and make it x squared minus 2x minus 2. I want you to take a minute and think about what those little tricks we just did. All right, the first thing was distribute your negative. The second one was to regroup it like I have in the red parentheses. And notice that you have conjugates. So instead of foiling, we just have to do F and L. Okay? Now, we do have a binomial times a trinomial, so we're going to have to multiply that out still. I'm going to pause the recording. You guys try the rest of this on your own. All right, distributing our x to everything gives us x cubed minus 2x squared minus 2x. Distributing our negative 2 to everything is negative 2x squared, positive 4x, and positive 4. And then combining x cubed minus 4x squared plus 2x plus 4. Yes? And what have I forgotten to do here? Yes, give it a name, f of x, g of x, whatever. Okay? So keep that in mind that any imaginary or irrational zeros are always going to occur in pairs. Okay? We're going to assume they all have a multiplicity of 1 unless you're told otherwise. All right. Could I have a different answer for this that would still have the same zeros? So if I multiplied by a negative 1 out front, it would take my graph and it would flip it over the x-axis, right? But the zeros would still be in the same spot. What if I stretched it or compressed it? Does that change my zeros? 
No. So I could say I'm going to times every piece in here by 2. It's another polynomial that would still have those same zeros. Okay? Again, unless we tell you otherwise, we'll just assume that the coefficient here of x cubed is just a 1. But understand that there's an infinite number of polynomials we could come up with that would have those same zeros. Okay? All right. This is where we will pick up tomorrow, or I guess when you come back from break. So you guys are going to do day two to have when you come back after Thanksgiving? All right.